Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to New Jersey Soccer Legend Series. With us today, uh, New Jersey native from southern New Jersey, my part of town, Eastern <laughs> High School, Rutgers University um, standout, 88 games, 25 goals, current Sky Blue member with 42 games, five goals, Madison Tiernan. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Nah, no worries, no worries. Um, so we'll, we'll kick off today um, with, tell us a little bit about um, where you grew up and uh, some of the things that uh, you did at home on your own to practice to build a, a solid foundation for your future. Awesome, yeah, so I grew up in Voorhees, New Jersey. Um, awesome town. I was there my whole life, born and raised in the same house. My parents still live in the same house. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So I was a three sport athlete growing up. I played soccer, softball and basketball. So my time was always filled, whether it be, if it was a practice or a game, I was always in the car changing uniforms to go from one event to the other. So, uh, the big thing, obviously transitioning to choosing soccer as my main sport. I really had to put in the extra time because there was a lot of uh, conflicts, whether it be with another sport. So a lot of things that I did on my own, I think propelled me to get to where I am today. So obviously the normal practice routine would be like two practices a week. And you know that you're not going to improve to the high level you want to get to just practicing for like three hours a week. Right. So I did a lot of extra stuff on my own. I'm lucky that I had a younger sister who's also a high level soccer player. So we would just ride our bikes up to the local field in town and just knock the ball around, whether it be uh, the focus of the day would be dribbling or shooting, juggling, just technical work. I was lucky that I had someone going through the journey with me. So that always uh, pushed me to want to be better and be a role model for her. So I think I was lucky in that aspect um, to have a training buddy. So that always kept me busy, especially in the summer. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, so when you used to ride your bike, where were you going? To a, to a school, um, to an open field, to a wall? Um, like, what were you doing? So in our town, we actually didn't live in a neighborhood growing up, but the neighborhood that the field we would go to was right across the street. So we would cross the street maybe a mile away. We'd ride our bikes and it was a field called G and Julio. It was the, like the Pop Warner football uh, epicenter, I guess you could say, and they had put in a turf field. So it was an all purpose field. They used it for soccer, lacrosse, football. Um, and they always had nets up. So we would, we would go there and play on the field. And they had this awesome building that was like a brick wall. So you could use that to get touches in also. So it was kind of just the perfect place. And it was never really too crowded. So you could go there, there'd be an open net. And it was an awesome place to uh, get in any work you would want to, you know? So it was, yeah, it's funny whenever I go to my parents now, still, I feel like we're like, let's go up to Gian Julio just because it's just the place to be, you know, there's every, you can get so many different things in and uh, in this one place. So yeah, it was definitely a big part of me growing up that field. So, and my brother played there, played football. So even when he was there, I'd run up there to get in my fitness. I'd run to the field, be there, watch his games, watch his practices, and then uh, obviously run home. So, yeah, it was kind of like the center of my evolving into an athlete, I guess you could say. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, how, how often would you guys go play? Like, um, would you go every day? or, or and, and how often, like, would you go in, in down times? Like, like, you know, uh, spring break from school, Thanksgiving break um summertime uh, apart from like a regular um school day sort of week cycle how much right. would you go during the school day's week cycle and how much would you go um during those extended breaks yeah so i would say definitely the extended breaks would be the time we would be there in higher volume more often because like i said this get our schedule just from playing a bunch of sports like even though I only had soccer Tuesday and Thursdays, then on those other three days of the week, I would have uh, softball or basketball. So you'd have to fit it in. And summer was a huge time where 
kind of sports would slow down for a little bit and that's when we were able to like get in extra work um and like you said with breaks like spring break um once you get into high school obviously sports ramp up during those periods of time especially I played softball in high school too so spring break was like when you had a ton of games and practices so really juggling the biggest thing being a multi-sport athlete was if you had an extra hour of time like just go get something in whether it be 30 minutes of wall ball and then 30 minutes of shooting or finishing you know it's that extra time time management is a huge part of um, improving your game so if you can fit in even if it's 20 to 25 minutes of extra it's better than doing nothing so I think that was a huge thing knowing I have this field so close like just go up get a little work in come home do your homework whatever you have to kind of juggle all of your different um, tasks but yeah all right awesome mom so so you said you played uh three sports right um so tell me all along did you have a did you have a favorite or were you just you were just weren't sure or would you, would would it kind of bounce around in your head nah softball's my favorite nah basketball's my favorite nah soccer's my favorite or did you know all along that what that obviously soccer um was your favorite yeah i always like, I always had this yearning for soccer. Like, I liked playing the other sports, but I just knew the feeling that I got when I was on the soccer field wasn't comparable to the other sports. Like, I really enjoyed them, but it wasn't the same, like, need. You know what I mean? Like, it, I just had this, like, obsession almost. Like, when I was on the soccer field, that was – I knew that that was in my identity. Um, and when the time came, I knew that I couldn't live without soccer. So that was kind of the deciding factor, like – I really like these other sports, but soccer is just like written in my DNA. I need to constantly be around the game in some capacity. So I knew that that was just an easy choice, you know, so. When did you, um, when did you specialize? Did you specialize or did you sort of like just keep going all the way through? You said you were playing high school softball, right? So did you go yeah. all the way through? So it was around seventh grade. I was still playing for the Voorhees Avengers, which was my town team, travel team that I started with in second grade, which is unheard of now. You can't really play for your inner, like, inner town team because there's so many different clubs and stuff. So I was playing for my town team. And around the seventh grade uh, time is actually when I got introduced to um, a man who was involved with Mount Laurel United, which was at the time the dominant club in our area. And they said, if your daughter really wants to, you know, like improve and get to the next level, like maybe come and try it out. And that's when I moved in eighth grade to Mount Laurel and we actually became the first PDA South team. So at that time, um, I was still playing high level softball too, like competitively, which was like traveling all over the country, just like I was with soccer. So it was a really, really hard decision because I had become so close to my softball team also. Like those were girls who went on to play division one softball high level, but I knew that I needed to kind of explore the soccer avenue. So I stopped playing uh, like competitive outside of school softball, but played four years varsity for my high school team. So I was still getting that itch to play the sport that I still really enjoyed, but I knew that soccer was where my focus was and I had to um, take the avenue that was going to get me to the next level. So you yeah. sound like uh, you're a very, very busy um, teenager. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, yeah. Uh, so you played club ball for PDA South or PDA North? PDA South. Okay. So it wasn't too bad for you. So it was like a half an hour drive or so from Voorhees, right? Uh, yeah, really close. It was obviously the locations, West Hampton and it was, yeah, 25, 30 minute drive. So awesome, easy awesome. Yeah. So then from there, you, um, you went to Rutgers. Um, you had a fantastic career there. Um, your team uh, did fantastically well. You were part of that era. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your overall experience at, at, at Rutgers and, and going into college, um, college soccer or going into anything that you haven't gone into before. You have a picture in your head of what you think it's going to look like. Um, what did you find that was different to what you pictured before you went in? Um, I mean, I would say, you know, growing up, 
you're like the goal is like oh I want to play at the next level play high level soccer and like division one is obviously like everyone raves about it so when you get to that point and you know that you can play at that level you know it's a little nerve-wracking because now I'm coming from a team where I was a starter a captain on my club team you know big fish and then now you're going to this school where there's 35,000 students and you know it can be a little overwhelming and wow like I'm going to be a part of this program and and the coach is expecting me to fill a very large role, you know? So you go in and I mean, I felt like a little kid with like women, you know, just because it, the difference between a 17 year old girl and a 21 year old woman at that time in your life is like, my God, they're in a completely, they're, they're an adult and you're still like, mom, can you do my laundry? You know? So I think that was the biggest thing was knowing that I belonged and uh, knowing that, the team was counting on me to be a part of the journey that we were like creating. And I think once I, once I knew like people trusted me and they like knew that I could help the team obviously get far in our seasons and stuff, that's when I kind of just like relaxed and played. So it was kind of overcoming the, I'm not a kid anymore. Like, okay, like I can hang with these girls, obviously at the time, Janelle Foligno, Canadian national team, Olympic uh, medalist, you know, she's on the team and I'm looking up at her like, wow, like she is everything I want to be, you know? So, and I'm, uh, and now I'm like shaking her hand after she scores. So I think the big thing was just knowing that I belonged and um, just rising to the occasion. That's so, awesome. And yeah. you, um, you, you won a spot right in your first, first year or were you kind of uh, trickling uh, off the bench and, and as time went on, you, you became an established player or did you go in and, and wow them right from the beginning. Yeah, so actually I re remember this vividly. Um, we were playing, it was preseason maybe like a weekend and we had an inner squad. And you know, you're still like, you're finding your way because the people who have been there and are cemented in positions are comfortable and they're playing their best soccer. And I knew like this inner squad was gonna be like, you need to stand out because if you wanna be on the field, this is what's gonna get you on the field. And I vividly remember just, like absolutely cranking a ball and I scored. And I think like after that, I kind of just relaxed, you know, I was like, all right, like I'm in. And then from there I started every game and I just like found my way that way, like go in, work your butt off, do everything you're, you prepared yourself to get this far, all that extra work you put in, like they trusted you that you could be a part of this. So just go out there and be yourself. And once I did that, like, I cemented myself as a starter and was a starter all four years. So I think that was a big thing, just kind of like taking a deep breath and letting my natural ability and the hard work I put in take over. So. Okay. And did you end up playing the same position that you grew up playing or did you have to move around a little bit? Yeah. So uh, we played on my club team, like a four, four, two kind of fluid. I would play sometimes centrally and then sometimes I'd be an up top forward. And then when, when I got to Rutgers, we played in a more 4-3-3 style. So obviously uh, the wingers have a huge responsibility getting up and down the flank. And I was a 7 or 11. I usually was in those two spots. So um, it was a big adjustment just because in that formation, they have a huge defensive responsibility, but they also have a huge offensive responsibility. So it was just kind of like adjusting to that. And I think as it went, as like my career went on at Rutgers, they trusted me because I just earned their trust and I um, would sometimes in a game if we're winning one nothing and there's 10 minutes left and we need to hold that lead they put me in it outside back or they slide me into the center just to like clog in uh, uh, seams and stuff just because they knew I had that versatility and I would just work my butt off so um, yeah I got to play playing obviously a 7 or 11 it's kind of like you're an outside back sometimes and you're kind of a forward sometimes so it's a big responsibility on both ends of the ball. So that was really, I think that prepared me to be versatile and play multiple positions. Yeah. You're pounding the line, aren't you? Yeah. Down, right? Run, wind sprint the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that you've got a, a, a younger sister, Riley, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so that means that your parents have, um, are going now second time round with an ambitious um, soccer player. Um, is their approach to, towards Riley 
uh, different to how it was towards you? Because I'm, I'm guessing they learned a lot through your journey and probably Riley's uh, benefiting from that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> about the different approaches that you see. Yeah, I think so. I was obviously, I'm the oldest child. So my parents were learning through my journey. They didn't really know anything. They kind of were just rolling with it season to season and just kind of taking advice of people who had older children or went through it with another kid. So um, they definitely, I mean, I've always said it too, that my sister got the better end of the stick because when she was <laughs> a year and a half on the sidelines, she's kicking a ball already, you know, like she's watching the game, whether she even means to or not, you know, I didn't have that. So she, and also like my parents, they, they always say this, they, they made all their mistakes with me so that now they, know, they knew how to get it right with her. But I think in a way I take it as like a, a compliment that my sister has like been able to watch me and she wants to be just like me. She wants to get to where I am. So everything I do, I know that she's watching. So I make sure that everything's positive and that it gets her to where she can be. And I want her to even go further than I did. So um, yeah, my parents definitely learned all the things you can't, you should and shouldn't do. And then now she's obviously been on, been on a high level club team since she was six. So obviously yeah. um, she's gotten the benefit in that aspect. Her, she wasn't like me when I was in eighth grade, I could juggle like three times because no one ever taught, taught us how to juggle. So, um, yeah, so that's cool to watch her journey is very different. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, she's a fabulous player. I had an opportunity to work with her years back. Uh, she's she's fantastic and I'm happy yeah. that she's doing well. Uh, so just sticking with the parents, were your parents more, um, more laid back and kind of um, let you navigate or, or were they involved and, and like really trying to direct you? Um, I'm only asking because I, I, every guest, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel of, of how high level players um, that have made it, what type of approach their, their, their parents had. So what type of approach did your parents have? Yeah, so my parents always had high expectations, not in like a technical or soccer aspect or any sport, whether it be like um, whatever that skill required. They knew if I went out there and worked 100%, like things would fall into place. Like. You, there's no excuse for never giving 100% of yourself. So that their expectations of that were always very, very high. Like I knew coming off the field, if I had a bad day and I was like kind of slacking here or there, my dad would be on me for that because he knew that's something I can control. Like every day you go out, you give 100%, no matter what. If the ball's bouncing off your knee, bouncing off your shin, it doesn't matter. If you're out there busting your tail, things will fall into place and that's all we can ask of you. So in that way, they were – they always had high expectations of me. Um, and even just with, uh, like, like we were talking about skill, they knew if I wasn't doing the extra work or putting in the extra time, then there was no one to blame but myself. So they knew, they held me accountable in that way. I knew like, you're right, dad, I should have did that extra 30 minutes. Like that would have helped me today. I, my touch may have been a little cleaner. So they definitely were not hands off, but they also weren't helicopter parents where they were like you need to do better like they always just encouraged me to push myself 100% um, and I think that's a huge part of my success because they were so supportive and they knew what I had in me so they always were pushing me to like break my ceiling so yeah, yeah you give 100% 100% of the time just good things happen yep. all on their own don't they exactly like that that you can control you can control if you're getting into tackles and and busting your butt but other things sometimes the ball is just not bouncing your way and that happens but there's no excuse not to work hard so that was something I think taught me a lot about life too not just in sports just if you give all of yourself to something like good things are going to happen so yeah that's awesome and uh that that kind of makes sense uh the first time I I watched you play uh was with uh Sky Blue and and uh you came off the bench and and I saw this feisty uh, fighting player and and I remember talking to Carly and I'm like, hey man, uh, Madison should be playing, man. At least she she empties the tank. She she gives it all her got. So uh, you have a strong mentality. Does that does, do you think that just goes back to that message that you kept hearing about um, working as hard as you can? Yeah, definitely. And even though now I'm obviously I'm an adult and I'm playing professionally, like 
I still take the advice of my parents. My parents come to all my games. So when they would like, if I'm not in the starting lineup, that's fine. If you go in for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, six minutes, whatever it be, you go in like you got shot out of a gun and you give everything that you have and coaches will notice that. And, and it has worked to my advantage it pro playing professionally. You're playing with the best players in the world. And sometimes your role might be a 20 minute player, but those 20 minutes are going to be your hardest working best 20 minutes that you can give so that no one can ever say you didn't go out there and do whatever your role was that day. So I think that has stuck with me like my whole life and, that's a huge credit to my parents. They really like ingrained that in me. So yeah, it makes sense when you when when we see you out on the field. So yeah. so now you're you're at Sky Blue. Um, how's how hard was it to transition from college ball to um, to professional soccer? And what was the difference? Is is the let me ask you this: is the is the speed of play just a lot quicker? Is that the main difference? And what else is the difference that you see between the two? I think, so like we were talking about the transition from like being a high schooler to college and then college to professional, it's kind of the same thing in a way. Like, okay, now I'm this, I'm this graduate of school. I did all this stuff in college and now let me hop on the field with all these US national team players and high level players that play all over the world. And I have to go in there and, and keep the level and hang with them. So that that comes down to the same thing, like that mental aspect. Like, no, you have everything it takes to be at this level, so just let the game kind of take over. And like you said, the speed of play was definitely an adjustment, also because these players demand a certain level. So my first year, I'm playing with Christy Rampone, um, Kelly O'Hara, Sam Kerr. These are like world-renowned soccer players who are demanding a certain level and they don't care who you are you step in you keep the level or you pack your bags and you leave so once I went in there and I was like no I'm here I can hang they wanted me on this team they drafted me like they think that I can uh, fulfill some kind of role in some way and once you get, get in there and I just like let let soccer take over I knew that I prepared myself to get to that level it just it's exciting to see what you're capable of and the speed of play comes once you're playing at that level for long enough, you know, like you, you kind of just, your body takes over and you're like, all right, I can, I can do this. So that's the biggest thing too. Like, like the 17 year old kid playing with the 20 year old women. Now it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm playing with these, like Carly, I'm playing with Carly. I've been watching her on TV since I was little, you know? So it's just, you, you have to just kind of get over that. So yeah, that's been like a pr the most rewarding experience to be able to play with these players that, you look up to your whole life, you know, so. Yeah, so, so let me ask you this. So, so talk, let's talk a little bit about the off the ball movement um, through the different levels, right? Um, do, you, do you notice a big difference when you receive the ball and you, 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 you've got it and you look around and are the players at the professional level in a lot better positions than what they are in college ball? Yeah, I think so in college, like I, I was lucky, obviously Mike O'Neill knows the game very, very well. So he always taught us to play like one and two passes ahead, three and four player, like everything is always, um, you're looking for the next, next pass. You're not worried about the pass that you're gonna make. So I was lucky that I kind of had that mentality, like before I even get the ball, I know where I'm going to go with it. And I think the the best part about playing professionally is these players know that. So in college, sometimes the movement's too late. Like I knew that I wanted to make that pass, but the player didn't make the run because they didn't see it. But at the professional level, the game has, is just so much more elevated that you. I know when I'm going to receive the ball, regardless of who it is. I see that team open up. I know that player is going to make that run because they see the game the same way as I, as I do. So I think the tactical aspect of the game in the professional level definitely is so much higher, you know? So, but having that foundation of knowing to play in three and four player combinations and knowing where am I going before I get the ball, like helped with the speed of play adjustment. So. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, it, it, from, from what I'm seeing, Sky Blue uh, is making a lot of changes. You guys are bringing in some, have brought in some fantastic players. 
Um, uh, how exciting is it to uh, see this roster revolve and even just the, the conditions and, and the facilities and all the changes that are being made? Yeah, I mean, especially being a Jersey native and someone who has like a very strong Jersey pride, um, seeing where we were and where we're going is just so exciting. And because New Jersey soccer is, it's, it's such a, it's like a strong, powerful environment, you know that. And you want, want the people here to want to look up to the Jersey team, want to aspire to be like them. And, you know, I just, I have like a very, just, very strong passion about New Jersey. So seeing everything Elise, Elise has done for us to get us to where we are now, just night and day from where we, where we were. And we deserve that. And New Jersey deserves that because it's just the, the culture here until you're here, you don't, you might not understand what that means, but like the amount of Jersey kids we have on the roster, then add in all these compliments of renowned players. I just think it's going to be, an awesome season when we resume. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's awesome to see. I'm, I'm, I'm real happy with everything that's going on up there. Yeah. All right. So a uh, couple more things. ODP. Um, you, you, you played ODP growing up. Um, uh, quite a few of the guests that I've had on the on on the show uh, didn't make it in their first year. Uh, are you one of those and how was your experience at ODP? Yeah, so the same guy who got me to come over to Mount Laurel was also the same same guy who told my dad, you need to bring your daughter out for ODP. Like the, at the time, that was like the thing to do. Like you, you play club or, or travel, whatever, but ODP was like, you have to play ODP. So when I went to ODP, you know, it's just all these girls I've been playing with like throughout the state of New Jersey with and against and it's that's a, the same kind of atmosphere it's like kind of intimidating you're like wow these these are these girls are high level soccer players and I just moved to this high level level soccer team so I was kind of very raw at the time so I was like like my dad said go out there just bust your tail do everything you can and if it's meant to be it'll work out and I actually was lucky and I made the team my first year. Hey. <laughs> but, and also at, at that time, Glenn Crooks, who was the head coach at Rutgers at the time, was my age ODP coach. Okay. And he had the older team. And there was like an open tryout because they needed extra girls to go to the national final. And he had our entire age group, 95, try out to see what girls he was going to sprinkle into the roster. And I actually ended up making the older team to go with them. So, one thing I'll take away from ODP is that I won two national titles yeah. and it was a huge reason I went to Rutgers because Glenn Crooks obviously was the coach and we had a really, really good relationship. I like, loved everything he was doing. So I was like, you know, this, I, let me, let me play at the next level with him. So yeah, oh. I love ODP, special place in my heart. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Love Glenn. He's a, uh, he's a fantastic guy and a fantastic yeah. coach. Um, all right. So last, last thing, um, if you could go back and relive one moment, uh, what would it be? Oh, gosh. I think the most euphoric moment just of my playing career was the day we beat UVA in the Elite Eight at their field on Klockner in penalty kicks. We played a whole double overtime game, put in a hard shift, and I was like, <laughs> It was probably the best day of my, of my soccer life. You know, I just, you know, in college, we were like, we'll never be able to beat UVA. They were like the powerhouse, you know. And from my freshman year, they beat us 6 nothing. And then when I'm a junior, I'm on their field playing in the Elite Eight. I'm like, I'm walking away here with a win. And that <laughs> was just, like, to this day, was just probably one of the best feelings to play in that game. So, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Give me um, quick responses. Favorite team? Favorite team? Ooh, Barca. All right. Favorite male player? Luis Suarez, the fighter. Oh, hey, like, uh... I that. That's my wife's favorite player, too. <laughs> <laughs> favorite female player? Oh no! <laughs> year. No, I was a Mia Hammer when I was younger. So all right, that's awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I couldn't pick anyone still currently playing. That yeah, no, that's good stuff. <laughs> good thinking. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> All right, Madison. Listen, fantastic to chat with you. Um, hopefully the season resumes soon. Uh, good luck with everything. Let's keep in touch. And, and thanks so much for uh, sharing your thoughts today. I'm sure you're going to uh, inspire a lot of kids and, and parents and even coaches. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great no talking. No worries. No worries. Talk to you soon. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.